August 2022, Thursday class. So after today's Thursday class, we will break for one week plus. Yeah. There will be no more class until we six uh, until six of September, which is the Tuesday class. Namo Pen Sermoni for Namo Pen Sermoni for Namo Pen Sermoni for Namo Quan Sing Pusa Namo Quan Sing Pusa Namo Quan Sing Pusa Namo for Pusa Namo for Pusa Namo for Pusa Arahang Sama Sam Buddha Bagawa Buddhang Bagawantang Abiwa Demi Suakato Bagawata Damo Damang Namasami Supati Pano Bagawato Sawakasango Sanghang Namami Namo Atasa Bagawato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sanghang Saranang Gachami Dirtyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dirtyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Dirtyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami Dirtyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tatiampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Tatiampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami Panati Patao Eramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Adina Dana Eramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Kame su me cha cha ra ve ramani sikha padang samadhiya mi Musawada ve ramani sikha padang samadhiya mi Sura me raya maja pamadatana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Okay, you all can be seated. Then turn to page 3 of the chanting book. We shall chant the Puja, Padipa Puja. Okay, Padipa Puja, Offerings of Light. Ganna sarapa di tena di pena tamadang sina di loka di pang sambudang pujaya mi tamonudang ganna sambara yutena do pena hang sugang hina Puja ye puja niyantang Puja bhajana mutamang Vanna ganda guno petang Etang kesuma santatin 
Offering of light to the Buddha brings forth the causes and conditions to illuminate our mind and help rise the needed clarity and understanding to dispel all darkness or ignorance therein. Significance of offering of water. May this offering of pure, clear, cool water lead us to the pure, clear Dhamma that cools and doses of the fires of all defilements within our mind. Significance of offering of incense. May our morality, virtue and understanding shine forth far and wide, just like the fragrance of this incense which we are offering to the Blessed One, who is perfect in wisdom and virtue. Significance of offering of fruits. May this offering of fruits remind us of the dana parami or generosity and the fruit of our karma so that we will diligently strive on with heedfulness to attain the path and fruition as soon as possible. Significance of offering of flowers. May this constant offering of flowers to the Blessed One Strengthen our faith and constantly remind us of the impermanence of this body so that we uh, yearly and sincerely strive on to cultivate sila, samadhi and panya leading to ultimate liberation, the bond free nibbana. Making of oral aspiration by the power of all these merits born of these offerings, may our spiritual faculties of sadha, virya, sati, samadhi, and panya be further strengthened until they become balas of power. Sharing of merits with all beings. May these merits be shared and transferred to all beings without exception especially to those who have the condition and affinity to receive them. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Okay, let's pay respect, Tripa Jeff. Badang Pajami. Damang Pajemi Sanghang Pajemi <coughs> Okay, you all can be seated. Huh? 
just relax body and mind then we are off the light so that you all can have your half an hour of awareness based meditation eh? so awareness based meditation is very simple when you understand its main intent and purpose is to develop the inner awareness within us eh? to stabilize it after that then use it to meditate eh? so what you need to do is you just relax completely body and mind be at ease don't try to know, don't try to do anything, just relax, then maintain awareness. Yeah. Maintain awareness means just aware, finish. Whatever arises, aware, finish. So when you continue to develop that training, you are indirectly training yourself just to be aware so that you are not distracted by whatever that arises or happens within your form and mind. You become like attracted to what your mundane mind tells you, your senses that allow you to perceive external sense data and phenomena. Then when you are curious, when you want to know then you get yourself entangled into more thinking. That's why the awareness base cannot be developed because you tend to be heedless. You think a lot. And because you lack Dhamma wisdom, normal people who are not trained, they will become heedless. Their mind will wander. Uh, then the thought will keep on arising because of your memory, your lack of understanding. And the main reason being, you lack the spiritual faculties. When the five spiritual faculties are lacking, the mental hindrances are there. And these are mind states that hinders your mind from entering the meditative state of inner peace, inner calmness and inner awareness. That's why most people cannot meditate. So to meditate is just to relax, maintain awareness. Then the four support that I always share with you all. Relax is number one. Maintain awareness is number two. Then number three is to stabilize the awareness. Is maintain the awareness for as long as you can until the awareness nature within become very stable. Hmm. And when you can do that, when you are skillful, then you can use it to meditate. And after that, you can move on to the fourth support, which is trust. Trust your nature to do the development of the spiritual meditative movement. So trust means you trust your nature to move without the thought coming into play without interference from your memory, your views, your opinion and your conditioning. Means your Monday mind is not active at all. The awareness nature within relax, maintain awareness and allow it to detect the gateway to your nature around your heart area. Just silent everything. Then it will detect. Mm. You can slowly, mindfully, come out of the meditation. Try to maintain whatever inner peace, inner calmness, and inner awareness that you have developed for as long as you can. Eh? And we will chant the invocation to the Davis. Eh? Turn to page 6 of the chanting walk. Invocation to the Devas. In this universe, in the entirety, let the dainties of Devas come here. Let them hear the good teachings of the King of Sage, which gives heaven and release, Nibbana. 
this is the time to listen to the chanting. Oh, sorry, to the teaching. This is the time to listen to the teaching. This is the time to listen to the teaching. Samanta chiyokawale su atra gachantu devata saddhamang munirajasa sunantu usakamokadang Dhamma Svanan Kalo Ayang Badanta Dhamma Svanan Kalo Ayang Badanta Dhamma Svanan Kalo Ayang Badanta Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Iti peso bhagawa arahang sama sambuddho Vecha charana sampano sukato loka vidu Yotaro purisa dhamma sarthi sat Ta Deva Manu Sanang Buddha Bhagavati Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sandetiko Akaliko Ehipaseko Opanaiko Pachyatam Veditabho Venohiti Supatipano Bhagavato Savakasango Ujopatipano Bhagavato Savakasango Nyaya Patipano Bhagavato Savakasango Samichi Patipano Bhagavato Savakasango Yadidang Chattari Purisa Yogani Atta Purisa Pugala Esa Bhagavato Savakasango Ahuneyo Pahuneyo Dakeneyo Anjali Karaneyo Anotarang Punyang Ketang Lokasati Sadu Sadhu, Sadhu. Okay, you all can be seated. So we would like to welcome eh, Sister Po Ching <laughs> uh, and Han to the Thursday class today. Eh? They, I think for Po Ching, first time eh, attending this Thursday class at Sister Pamasuri and Brother Tion's house. Eh? Uh, Han also first time here, uh, so this place is very conducive. Huh? It's very uh, well designed huh? and also built. Huh? So we have been using it for I think quite a while already huh? since it was renovated and properly uh, done up. So we really would like to thank. To Sister Pamasuri for allowing us to use this place eh, for Thursday class. Let us rejoice. 
साधु 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 ओके सो व्हाट वी आर डूइंग बिफोर वी हैव आवर आई थिंक नाइन और टेन डेज ऑफ ब्रेक बिकॉज वी आर बी अवे फॉर द साइलेंट टेंपल स्टे सो after today's class the coming sunday class tuesday class and thursday class and the subsequent sunday class will also be cancer eh? then we will commence back on the 6 of september tuesday class eh? so please take note we were going to Appendix six of the Heart Sutta earlier on, eh? so we continue from where we stop. So this Appendix six of Heart Sutta is very important. Eh? It's about training the mind. So we have covered quite a bit. Eh? What is a trained mind? What is an untrained mind? Then the training of the mind we started, I think, more or less finishing already. Hmm. So anyway, I will just quickly run through the training of the mind. Without wisdom, living beings are heedless; hence, they suffer because they don't understand life. Then, to understand life, one must understand the secret of life, which is basically the four noble truths as taught by the Buddha. Then, to understand the four noble truths. One must train one's mind to be heedful, to understand what is going on in life, so as to understand who we are, what we are, and how our mind functions, so that we understand what causes us suffering, and how our deluded mundane mind get muddled up in life. Then the untrained mind is heedless and not peaceful. The reason being, the five mental hindrances of sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness of mind and doubt. These mental hindrances will hinder one from entering the meditative state of inner peace with inner awareness within. And to overcome these five mental hindrances, one only need to cultivate the opposite five spiritual faculty. And this spiritual faculty of sada, virya, sati, samadhi, and panya, as taught by the Buddha, is a very important mind state, because the spiritual faculty enables us to understand spiritual teachings and develop the spiritual mind, means the meditative mind. Without the spiritual faculty, you cannot be in the state of meditation. Uh, Then after that, we develop the understanding that when the five spiritual faculties are there, the mental hindrance will be gone, and the mind is automatically trained. Hmm. That is why we should work on the cultivation of the five spiritual faculty via our puja and devotional practices. And daily religious routine cultivation. So puja and devotional practice is to develop the sada, virya, the faith. Then after that, we develop the ability through the sada and virya to go all out to cultivate this sati. So once sati is developed, stabilized. It becomes samadhi. Then, with sati and samadhi, we can see things as they are. We can insight the phenomena and develop the awakening, which is the wisdom. That's how the five spiritual faculty will fall into place. Then, after that, we cover the last part. Basically, the Buddha subdivided the dharma cultivation into. The three phases of dhamma. So these three phases of dhamma, I have already written them 
on the whiteboard previously. You can look at the whiteboard. So these three phases of Dhamma, they are very important. Yeah? First phase is Pariyati. Pariyati means the learning of the teaching. So to learn this teaching, there are many ways. Yeah? We have a table in Appendix 6, yeah? where later on I will go through with you. Then you can develop the understanding. But basically, is to learn the teaching, the essential Dhamma, the Four Noble Truths and its three turning together with the essential Dhamma that spin off from there. When you understand those teachings, means you have already developed the first phase. To develop the first phase, in the time of the Buddha, you have to be there to listen to him when he proclaimed the teaching. Otherwise, you have to wait for his attendant, Ananda, to repeat it uh, at various other occasions. But nowadays, our society has progressed, evolved. We have science and technology. We have better ability to develop the language. First is we have language. We are able to write them down. So the event of all this help in the phase one number. So when writing is available, we can have the teaching written down. Yeah. And nowadays we even have the printed media, computer. Even the hard copy, we have very nicely designed books. Yeah. Or you can type it out using a typewriter. Or now you got a computer where you can print it out through the printer. So you can read about it. Or you can go online to Google it or use other search engine to search. Then from there, you develop the ability yeah, to cultivate this first phase of Dhamma, which is the learning of the teaching. This phase is not easy. This phase, if you don't get the right source or the right teacher who can develop the understanding, you may miss out the essence uh, because now in the internet all sorts of dhamma are there <laughs> it may not be the authentic or true one then the explanation is different too the commentary is also very different then the interpretation of it also very different so the first phase of dhamma you need to have the good parami yeah, to enable you to screen through and receive the true teaching or the Dhamma. Yeah. Then like all things, after you have learned about it, after you have the knowledge or what they call uh, intellectual understanding of what this teaching is, then the next phase, which is phase two, is party party. Party party is when you put the teaching into practice. And this thing can only be done when you integrate it with your daily life. So when you put your teaching into practice in the midst of life, then party party develops. Yeah. Phase one Dhamma, phase two Dhamma, you also need the five spiritual faculties that just now we mentioned. So after I will go through the table, you will see them, eh? then you will understand how to cultivate them. This Patipati 
the cultivation part is the most extensive and you have to really diligently with the faith, sadha and virya yeah, go all out to cultivate it. Once you cultivate and realize the noble teaching or the what they call noble truth, once you awaken to it, you become enlightened beings. You develop the wisdom, the awakening, then you understand life. You understand the secret of life. You will know how to live life. Then your life becomes very different. So once you have the ability, you will be able to reap the fruit of your hard work, which is the third phase of Dhamma. Third phase of Dhamma is to live the noble life of a noble one or an enlightened being. So this third phase of Dhamma is the most beautiful phase of our life. When you have developed the Pariyati and Patipati, then you awaken to live the third phase of Dhamma, which is Pativeda. So during this phase, you are always tranquil, peaceful, calm, and you have a lot of understanding, wisdom, virtue, then you can see things clearly. You got no problem with life. No problem with anything that happened to the world or to yourself or to your loved one. So this is what the Dhamma is all about. When you develop them over the three phases, you become different, beautiful, unique. And once this becomes a living reality, then you like shine forth and you can become a blessing to all, not only to yourself, to your loved one, to all of humanity and to the world. Then you can contribute in many ways. Yeah? Then the totality of consciousness within your country within your uh, place you stay or the planet they can be different uh, you will be able to develop the contribution towards that totality of consciousness uh, okay now we turn to page 245 of the Heart Sutta which is Appendix 6. Spiritual faculty is on the left hand side. Then in the middle is the three turnings of the four number two. Then towards the extreme right is the three phases of Dhamma cultivation. So phase one on the extreme right, you will see this. Dhamma cultivation, phase one, Pariyati. Pariyati is the learning of the teaching of the doctrine. The develop a very stable understanding of the Dhamma is taught by the Buddha. So how can we do it? Pativa, pat, pariyati developed through at the center, yeah, the center paragraph. First is through Suttamaya Panya. Suttamaya Panya is the first turning wisdom born of hearing or reading the Sutta or the Dhamma as taught by the Buddha. Nowadays, because of the advent of modern facilities and things that can help us, we can listen to all this Dhamma talk again and again through our recording, through our computers. Then there are also books, there are also notes, and other means. Eh? You have printed media, you have printed books, and many of these are available, even online eh? information. You can also Google them. So this first phase, of Dhamma to listening and reading is the first turning wisdom 
So if you have cultivated before in the past, this first turning wisdom, they can actually surface and you can awaken. Because the moment you read about the truth or you hear about the truth, because in the past you have cultivated before you had the parami, you already have the understanding of all this. So once you hear them or read about them, it will trigger off. But this being, this type of beings are rare. You, you have to have very strong past cultivation and parami to have the ability to awaken. Yeah. Just like during the Buddha's time, many of his disciples has this ability. Yeah. We have heard of many. Yeah. The five ascetic, I think all five became Arahan after the second uh, sharing. The first sharing, Kondanya alone, one out of the five became a Sutapan. Mm. Then after that, he continued with the second proclamation. The first proclamation is the first sermon, or he called it the Dhammachaka Pavatana Sutta, the first turning of the Dhamma wheel. Yeah. So this Dhammachaka Pavatana Sutta is basically the teaching of the Four Noble Truths and its three turnings. So that one, before he finished the Sutta, Kondanya, one of the youngest of the five ascetics, but also the wisest, he awakened and become a Sutapan. And that is through hearing. Yeah. So first turning wisdom, Sutamayapanya. Then after that, he, the Buddha continued with the second sermon. The second sermon is Anatta Lakana Sutta, the Sutta on Anatta, or non-self nature, empty nature, not a permanent unchanging entity nature. So once you finish the Anatta nature, the Sutta on Anatta, all five become Arahant straight away. How is it possible? Is it because they have the Parami and they met with the Samasa Buddha? <laughs> and all this need very strong past cultivation and parami. But if you don't meet up with a great being or a fully enlightened being like Sakyamuni Buddha, it's very difficult to awaken because you cannot find truth. Nobody can tell you or explain to you what truth are. Then there are at that time, during the time of the Buddha, 2,600 years ago, before the coming of the uh, teachings as taught by Sakyamuni Buddha, there were so many different teachings of what they call belief system. So all this, they didn't lead to enlightenment or awakening as per what the Buddha understood. Yeah. So the true awakening that transform the form and mind into a very unique being that has the wisdom and the understanding of life uh, that can free their mind from all suffering. Uh, that type of enlightenment is very rare. That's why during the time of the Buddha, a lot of his disciples, they have good parami and it's possible for them to develop this Sutamayapanya, first turning wisdom. Then we move on to the second turning wisdom, Chintamayapanya. Chintamayapanya means wisdom born of contemplation, reflection. So after you have heard the teaching, you reflect on it, you contemplate on it, then you inquire into it is into all the teaching as taught by the Buddha so that one can stabilize the understanding then slowly assimilate all this Dhamma that one have heard and read about to set the base for further understanding later on via any of the first, second or third turning. 
wisdom. The third turning wisdom is to the cultivation. So the phase two of Dhamma cultivation is Patipati. Patipati means cultivation, we are putting the Dhamma learn into practice in daily life so that it can be a living reality. It can become a living reality. So this one is mainly tattening wisdom. Tattening wisdom is called Bhavana Mayapanya. Bhavana means the meditative training or cultivation. So when you develop the cultivation through bhavana, then you will awaken. And the only way to do it is to understand what sati is. Then stabilize it to become samadhi. Then with sati and samadhi, you can meditate and insight into phenomena and awaken to develop the final fifth spiritual faculty, which is Panya. So under this party party, the cultivation, by putting the Dhamma we have learned and read about into practice, you need Sati Samadhi leading to wisdom. So this three spiritual faculty is needed. Whereas for the first phase of Dhamma Pariyati, you only need to have faith, Sada and Virya. So now, you look at the table, you must have the five spiritual faculty intact to develop the first turning, second turning, and third turning wisdom, born of Suttamaya Panya, Chintamaya Panya, and Bhavana Maya Panya. So, with this table, I think it's clear, huh? because everything is summarized there. Hmm. Then, under the phase two of Dhamma cultivation, which is Patipati, there are two, uh, I think, two steps to it. The first step is the normal spiritual faculties of Sada, Virya, Sati, Samadhi, and Panya. Whereas the second step is to stabilize the five spiritual faculty until they become powers, unshakable. So here I have given you all the advice, Bratio's advice. It is not difficult to cultivate Patipati if you are truly or really, really serious, determined and sincere. You just cultivate the five spiritual faculty of Sada, Virya, Sati, Samadhi, and Panya. So when you are able to do that, oh sorry, there is one more part. Eh? Sada, Virya, Sati, leading to Samadhi. The meaning is Sati, when stabilized, will accumulate into Samadhi until they are unshakable then the mental spiritual faculty will become spiritual powers or balas. Then wisdom will keep on arising and you will awaken. So this part is very true yeah? because through my own experience the training and the cultivation that my nature has gone through I realize it's not difficult you develop the spiritual faculty until they are very stable. Then your mind is automatically in the meditative state. Then you can understand spiritual teaching very fast. You can develop the first turning, second turning, and third turning wisdom like very easily. That's why you must try it. You must have faith. Then the third phase of Dhamma, the last section is Dharma cultivation leading to Pativeda, the third phase of Dhamma, means reaping the fruit of your hard work or cultivation. So this is the most beautiful phase of one's life, where one can truly live life to the fullest, leading 
a noble life means a life of enlightened being. Then live the life of an awakened one. So these three phases of Dhamma we have finished. Then we go on to the next section, 6.4. Eh? 6.4 explain to cultivator the importance of sati. Sati or mindfulness or awareness before the knowing is the most important. Yeah. So sati is extremely important because without sati, one will become heedless. One will not be able to follow the advice of the Buddha to strive on with heedfulness. Apamadeda sampadeda. One will not be able to follow the advice of the Buddha to even cultivate and avoid all evil to good and purifying one's mind following Dhammapada verse 183. Because even keeping precepts to avoid all evil needs mindfulness. Without mindfulness, you cannot keep your precepts. Then, to cultivate wholesomeness, you also need mindfulness. Then finally, of course, to purify your mind, which is to meditate, you also need stable awareness, nature, or mindfulness. The fourth one is, one will not be able to keep one's precept. Uh, this one is a repeat, eh? overlap. Then when you don't have sati, it means there will be no spiritual faculties. The five spiritual faculties will not be there. Then there will be no four foundation of mindfulness practice. Because the four foundation of mindfulness need mindfulness to develop them. Then number seven is one will not be able to investigate the Dhamma, which is the enlightenment factor of Dhamma Vichaya. After Sati is Dhamma investigation, which is Dhamma Vichaya. So without Sati, you cannot investigate the Dhamma, where you cannot see things as they are. You cannot awaken, you cannot insight into the phenomenon. Then without sati, there will be no seven factors of enlightenment. Where sati is most important. Actually, without sati, the other enlightenment factor cannot fall into place. Yeah. Because not only you cannot investigate them, you cannot develop yeah, the ability of the mind eh, to have faith in the Buddha and his teaching to give rise to the virya, which is the third enlightenment factor. Because without sati, you cannot investigate into Dhamma. The Dhamma cannot be put into practice and it cannot stand up to investigation. So your faith cannot be stable and strong. And because of that, it cannot drive you to have the virya. And the virya is the third enlightenment factor. Then without sati again, you cannot enter the calm mind state, leading to piti, which is the fourth enlightenment factor. Then without sati, your mind cannot become tranquil and still, because it has to have sati, the awareness nature. So when it is tranquil and still, that is positive, the fifth enlightenment factor. Then you cannot have sati, it will not stabilize to become samadhi, which is a sixth enlightenment factor. And without samadhi, you cannot see things as they are and awaken to develop the wisdom, leading to the seventh enlightenment factor, which is opeka, uh, equanimity of mind. The equanimity of mind is with wisdom. Uh, Okay, then the last one is, without sati, there will be no noble eightfold power cultivation. So this is obvious. Eh? Mm. 6.5, important advice to cultivator or so-called meditators. Don't try to know anything during meditation. So this one I have explained. Eh? Why? Because that trying to know is always by the thought. And you want to develop awareness-based meditation, you cannot create more thought, more thinking. When thought is still active, 
you cannot be in the state of city or awareness. That's why you cannot go and do all those foolish things. So don't try to know. The other one is don't try to do. Where the doing is also by the thought. Eh? Then number two is just silent the mind and let things be. The understanding will arise on its own. When your mind has stable sati, means you have realized the silent mind, the meditative mind. And that is actually your true mind. Then the understanding will arise on its own once you have sati. Hmm. Number three, the moment you are truly silent and relaxed, sati is already there. So you don't have to practice or learn to be mindful, to be aware. Just understand that man can only do one thing at a time. Either you are without thought, in city, away, fully away, or you are lost in thought, preoccupied with what you are thinking, then continuing to proliferate that thinking process, thereby making one heedless. So when you are heedless, you cannot be away. So the moment you are truly silent, without thought, you are already away. Of course, you also must learn how to relax. So I read this again. The moment you are truly silent and relaxed, sati is already there because there is no thought. This is the silent mind that can meditate, that can investigate into phenomena, that can insight into phenomena. Then let the phenomena tell you the story when you silently observe without the movement of thought, you will awaken. This is what you mean by insight in the phenomena. You will awaken. Yeah. Don't go and look for the story with your thought or Dhamma knowledge. If you do that, you will end up doing thought-based meditation. Yeah. So note, the pitfall of thought-based meditation is one is limited by the instrument that one uses to develop the meditation. Hence, the inability to realize the enlightenment which is beyond thought, beyond mind. One needs to inquire deeply to find out for oneself who is the meditator. If it is the thought which is actively doing all the noting, labeling, chattering, and trying, to describe the Dhamma and trying to develop the meditation, then that is not the silent mind. That is thought-based meditation. The real Dhamma can only be realized when you are truly silent and aware. Yeah. So this understanding is important. Huh? Okay, 6.5, this one is important. Eh? Using the silent mind or samasati. Sama is like right or perfect. Perfect mindfulness or the right mindfulness. Hmm? Just like the Malay word sama. Huh? When your mind is silent without any thought, you will understand everything that is going on within your five aggregates of five form and mind. And you will awaken or insight into phenomena to awaken to the three universal characteristics of anichang, dukkang, and anatta. That's why if you do not understand, you go and use thought, you can never awaken. Because the true awakening is why your true mind, which is your silent mind, the awareness nature within. And that one is not a being. That one is just that nature that first come out before the thinking arise, before the mundane thinking, the thought manifests. You will understand how upon contact consciousness come to be. And then 
how within the content of consciousness you will see how your mind stir after you input your mental intention born of your wrong view. Then how upon contact the seven universes which are common to all consciousness arise simultaneously. The feeling part, you will feel it clearly and you will understand how upon contact feeling arise. Then feeling can remain pure feeling. It's not conditioned into clear. But because you don't have the wisdom or you lack Yoni Sopmanasikara, which is wisdom at the moment of sense experience or wise attention at the moment of sense experience. Feeling will immediately be conditioned into craving. That's why you cannot guard a feeling without wisdom. It very fast, split second, it becomes craving. Really. Hence, without wisdom or Yoni Sopmanasikara, you cannot guard a feeling. You will see all this within your meditation. And that is the real direct scene. That is how you will come to understand clearly that this condition arising mind or the mundane mind, the stirring of this mundane mind and the reactive mundane mind, they are not your true minds. They arise because of your wrong view. They are dependent, originating, condition arising, cause of phenomena, hence impermanent. You grasp, you cling, you suffer. And because it's impermanent, it's not a permanent, unchanging entity where you can grasp onto, cling onto, hold onto, and say, This is me, this is I, therefore all this can be mine. That is a delusion, wrong view. And the last part is the four noble truth. One by one, you will come to understand them. You will come to understand the realities of life and existence. It's the first noble truth, the condition, the realities of life and existence. Then the second noble truth, what is the cause of arising or suffering? Mm -hmm. So under this second uh, noble truth. You not only understand the cause behind the arising of suffering, you also understand what suffering is. Yeah. Then what cause is arising? Hmm. Then we have the notes. The seven universes, they are common to all consciousness. Yeah. This first seven, minimum. In Pali, they are called the Sabbe, Chittasa Dharana, Chetasika. So these mental concomitant or mental factors, they are called Chetasikas. Mm. So the seven universes, huh? Sabbe, Chittasa Dharana. Sadharana means common. Eh? They are common to all consciousness. All consciousness is sabbe citta. Eh? That's why sabbe citta, sadharana. They perform the most rudimentary and essential cognitive function. Yeah. Without which consciousness of an object would be impossible. So what are they? For consciousness to arise, there must be contact, passat, eh? contact. Then upon contact, that feeling will arise, the area of feeling, Vedana. Then you will perceive it through your memory, perception, sanya. Then you will have mental intention, which is volition, chetena. Then there must be this one-pointedness of mind, miss. Your mind must be directed there. Ekagata. No. Then number six is Jivi Indriya, means the life faculties of the life force. Yeah. Then number seven, of course, is attention, Manasikara. 
when you have this ability to direct your mind there, then you will pay attention to that thing. Paying attention is manasikara. Yeah. That's why yoni so means wisdom at the moment of attention. Yoni so manasikara. Hmm. So hopefully this is clear. Eh? Then 6.6 .6 is the final section eh, on the training of the mind. So to develop the training of the mind, this 6.6 .6 is very important. There are five ways, according to the Buddha, to overcome unwholesome thought or negative mental states. So the Buddha taught five ways to overcome the unwholesome thought or negative mind states during meditation. First two ways they are still mundane or thought-based. So the first way is, according to the Buddha, to think of the direct opposite wholesome thought, to abandon the wholesome thought. So under the remark side is to do good. Yeah. But this is still using the thought. Yeah. That's why he said to think of the direct opposite wholesome thought. Like when you have anger, you have to think of the opposite, direct opposite, wholesome thought, which is loving kindness or metta. When you have metta, you cannot be angry. That is why thought is used. So this is what the Buddha meant by you use the skillful means through the two right effort, the third and the fourth right effort to develop it. The third right effort is to arise the unreasoned wholesome thought. You remember? Right effort to cultivate the wholesome thought that are still not in you. Here, you apply it. Yeah. So whatever unwholesome state that arise, you apply the third right effort, effort to arise the direct opposite wholesome thought. So, the third right effort to arise, the unreason right thought or wholesome thought is very important. So, you cultivate initially using thought base. It's okay. Then the fourth right effort is to refine upon and perfect the wholesome thought that has a reason. Yeah. So, this refinement yeah, and perfection Take a while. The process take a while. Take for example metta. Metta initially normal people don't know how to do. They were verbalized. Or they like parroting. May you be well and happy. Yeah. Of course, it gave rise to some form of verbalized type of metta. But that one is not strong not stable. Then if you just repeat the word and parroting and don't feel it in the heart, that type of metta is very, very weak, very superficial. It's mainly intellectual, thought based. But you move on to the next phase of metta when you develop the loving kindness, metta bhavana type of radiation. Then you realize this metta can be radiated out. Yeah. So initially, the radiation is through your will power. You will it out. You visualize that person, or you visualize yourself facing a mirror, or you face a mirror. Then you will. May I, this body and mind of mine, be well and happy well and happy. So you feel it through your feeling first. So that feeling becomes that matter. So that is the first phase where you move away from verbalization to the inner feeling. When you feel it, you develop that matter. 
you feel yourself engulfed in this matter, your body, your mind, be well and happy, without enmity, without ill will and untrouble. May it keep itself happy and peaceful always. May there be love, may there be joy, may there be peace. So when you develop all this, then you can actually build up the metta force inside there. When you have a lot of metta, then everything that you come to perceive, you perceive it with love and metta. You wish them well-being and happiness. Uh, may they be well and happy. May they be free from all suffering, without enmity, without ill will. And may they keep themselves peaceful and happy always. May there be love, may there be joy. So once you develop this metta bhavana until you become very strong, then you are charged with metta energy. Then you can radiate this metta to whoever you want to benefit. It can be to the plants, to the trees, the non-human, or even to the environment, to your entire neighborhood. So you can like follow the Metta Bhavana uh, teaching given by Sakyamuni Buddha. The ten direction where you read it to all. Uh, may all beings within my Subhangjaya neighborhood uh, be well and happy. Then the directional one. May all my neighbor towards the left of me, the right of me, be well and happy. Then east, west, north, south, then in between, then the up, uh, they call it what? up and down. Uh, up and down is, there are two English words for it, I forgot already. Uh, so all these are the ten directions you can read it. Uh, then after that, when you wheel it out, you visualize that person. Then when you wheel, it's very powerful. The meta will go, will go. Then the being can feel. The dog also can feel. Uh, the animal also can feel. So when you have full of metta energy, then you can wheel it out. Means you have transformed and improved. You have stabilized. You have refined your metta ability to radiate. So when you radiate, whoever you visualize, that metta force will go on. Uh, and these are thought energy, which really go. Yeah. But of course, mostly is feeling, emotion. And because that feeling and emotion is full of metta, that's how it becomes effective. It becomes powerful. Then later on, you will move beyond that phase. From the ability to build up the metta and wheel it out, you will develop real metta inside you. You become so loving, so compassionate. Your nature inside has metta. So that love, that compassion will allow you to have this metta energy flowing out from your nature. You no need to wheel on. That nature has that metta energy. And that one come out is not a thought. It's a very, very fine, pure metta energy. Oh, that one very powerful. That one, the whole environment, the animal, whatever, the non-human, everything, they can feel you. They can feel you. Yeah. So these are the stages of development of virtue, where you refine upon it, then perfect it. Yeah. Similarly for other right thought. Eh? We have a lot of right thought, not only metta, eh? even mudita. Eh? So mudita is also a very powerful eh? right thought because when you develop them, it will manifest. Eh? So not only the four Brahma Vihara, where you develop metta, karuna, mudita, and upeka. Yeah. You can also have 
like respect, joy, contentment, pleasantness, gentleness, uh, then generosity. All these are virtue. So these are all without evil roots. That's why they are all right thought. All your kind, gentle, and wholesome thought that lead to harmony, lead to friendliness, lead to understanding. Yeah. So all this can be developed. Yeah. Then we move on to the next one. The second way the Buddha says is to reflect and contemplate upon the danger and grave consequence of holding on to the wrong thought. Because they are the three evil roots that can bring about karmic negativity. Then arise the right effort to abandon this wrong thought or unwholesome thought. So this abandoning is very important. Eh? When you know that the consequence of holding on to that wrong thought, for example, anger or hatred, is an evil root, make you evil, cause your karmic downfall, you will determine all out to abandon that wrong thought. Yeah. So, the first right effort to abandon the wrong thought that has a reason is the cultivation that you must develop. And how do you develop it? You develop it through the five ways as taught by the Buddha. These two, first two ways. Then third and fourth way is the meditative way. The last one is the willpower. Uh, so I will go through the rest later. So the fourth right effort, which is your second right effort, uh, sorry, the number four is second right effort to prevent the arising of this unwholesome thought from arising in the future. So this, you must go through the third way and the fourth way to develop the wisdom. Then when the wisdom is there, you can apply the second right effort to prevent it from arising. Means when you are aware with the wisdom developed, it cannot arise anymore. Uh, but before the wisdom, you cannot do it. So the first two right effort, you need to follow the five ways. So next page is the third and the fourth way. Third way is just the meditative training. Sorry, the third and fourth way are meditative training to develop wisdom, to understand what is going on so that your mind can free and liberate. So third way, you just silence the mind, as taught by the Buddha, aware, don't do anything. This is awareness-based meditation. To train the mind by deconditioning it from the heedless thinking or grasping at sense experience, means you just silence, maintain awareness, don't do anything. By just being silent and aware, without any thought, the mind will settle down on its own and return to its original state or natural state of inner awareness, inner mindfulness, and inner silence, leading to stillness. The understanding is the moment you are silent without thought, you will come to know all these negative emotions or emotional negativity all the evil roots, the mental hindrance, like anger, hatred, fear, worry, anxiety, sorrow, lamentation, insecurity, phobia, all this, they are merely conditioned arising mind state and they are never you. That is, anger is never you, fear is never you. How do you know? Because when you are aware, when they arise, you stay with it, then what happens? The awareness is a purifying force. 
he actually purify the delusion and the negativity then there is no more condition for anger, hatred to continue to manifest that's how it sees and when it sees your mind become tranquil, still means the original state which is your true mind, your true nature, your awareness nature return then you realize all this negative emotion which is fear, worry, anxiety even your anger, your hatred they are not intrinsic they were not there initially they arise to your wrong view they are dependent condition are dependent originating condition arising cause of phenomena that's how you develop the awareness based meditation to realize all this then when you realize all this you become different if they are not me I don't have to do anything the anger was never me. I only had to understand this. Then when I understand this, I will develop the wisdom to actually root it up. Because I will trace the origination factor through the fourth way. When you trace the origination factor, you will know how to retrospectively reverse it. So there must be a reason why it stir and become entangled. That's why that mindfulness to see that is very important. So when you trace the origination factor like anger, before you get angry, you are not angry. How come when you see something, or hear something, or recall something, like phobia or what, eh, or things that you don't like, then you become fearful, you become angry. So what is the cause? It's that delusion, that wrong view. Because you are habitual. You have constantly reacted that way. You perceive things wrongly, negatively. You perceive them with negativity. Maybe they have done something bad to you. Then you accumulate the negative memory, like your phobia, your insecurity, eh? your fear, your worry, your anxiety, your, you, you accumulate them, or your craving, your desire. So through thought, you hold on to it, you let it continue to create what they call the cocoon of thought that actually intensify the attachment, the craving. That's why until it becomes so habitual. That's why everything that happen in life, there are causes and conditions behind, is because of this. Through your habitual tendency, the spiritual uh, faculty not there. You cannot understand, you cannot see. So the mental hindrance continue to create havoc in you. Then when you are so heedless, without mindfulness and awareness, you cannot see, then your mind becomes deluded. That's why it give rise to this wrong thought, wrong view, conditioned by the wrong view, and create the stirring of the mind, the reactive mind, then this habitual tendency continuously create suffering in you. That's why you will constantly develop fear, worry, anxiety, get angry, unhappy, become miserable, insecurity, everything. So when you through your silent mind, pure awareness, when you observe and understand all this, then you awaken. Then you tell yourself, this is the cause. My habitual tendency, my wrong view, my lack of understanding. Then you ask yourself, how can I overcome this, resolve this, so that in future when I see the same thing, hear the same thing, recall the same thing, I don't label it that way. I don't perceive it with negativity to arise all this. Then the Buddhist teaching, the Buddha's teaching comes. The Buddha say, learn to see things as they are. Accept the reality of the moment. Accept what is. Because the Buddha said, whatever that arise, there are causes and conditions behind. Means condition already there, everything is fixed. Things will go that way, cannot be 
otherwise. So that is the reality. That is what is. That is nature. So you have to accept first. Whatever happened, accept first. Not to react, get angry and become deluded away. And become miserable away. That's why when you accept, you are at peace. Then you see things as they are, means they are just the way they are. And then the understanding will come. Oh, yeah, they are just the way they are. Because they are coming. They are coming past. They are conditioning. All this create delusion in them and entanglement. And they become the way they are. is because deluded people do deluded things. Angry people do angry things. Selfish people do selfish things. And the world is the world. Condition and that things to be like. So I learn to be at peace with all things, all situations. Then when I'm at peace, I got no problem. Then I have clarity of mind. I don't have negativity. And then I act. Act with what? With wisdom. Born of all this understanding. That's why I straighten my view. I do not see things negatively. I do not perceive things negatively. I do not react to whatever that arises. I develop mindfulness to be at peace. Then after that, I act. Act with wisdom. Born of Dhamma understanding. Following noble effort path. Right view with regards to law of karma. Law of mind. Paticca samopada. And law of Dhamma. When I have those right view, I know the causes and conditions. Then I will not become like before. Easily agitated. Easily like unhappy, then emotional. All this cease. So we right view, I come to the understanding, I become at peace. Then I act with what? Right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right mindfulness, for right effort and right samadhi. All this following noble evil power got no negativity. That's how you can free your mind. So the third way and the fourth way is very important. Now I go on to read the final part of the third way. The understanding and acceptance of the realities of all conditions arising, sensation and emotion at the moment of sense experience without any reaction or stirring of mind can lead to profound wisdom. This is what purification of mind is all about. When you just aware and witness it ceasing, then you realize they are not real. They are not you. They are dependent originating, condition arising. Therefore, they are impermanent. If I attach and cling one thing my way, I suffer. And because of that, it's anatta, non-self. Not me. Not real. It's a delusion. They are just phenomena. Dependent originating, condition arising, causal phenomena. He know you, he know me. Everything is not what you think. Then after that, the four ways to trace the origination factor and retrospectively reverse it via wisdom, the wisdom way, to free the mind. That is using the silent mind or the awareness nature within to trace the origination factor of the negative thought or mind states. And then reverse it retrospectively via straightening of one's view, which I have explained just now. Then train the cultivator to develop the true understanding via mindfulness of the six internal sense spaces, six external sense spaces via Dhamma Nupasana to arise the third turning wisdom, which is Bhavana Maya Panya. Yeah. So when you are mindful of the internal sense spaces, you can also be mindful of the external sense basis. So when these two come into contact, it triggers off the 18 sense rhyme. Then you see with mindfulness how they arise. Like the Buddha said, in the seeing, it's just a seeing consciousness. No one to see yet. Then when you input the content through wrong view and delusion, then the content of consciousness becomes egoic. That's how it has the egoic mental factor inside there, or mental chitena. 
that is stir and react and become what it is. So this is how you should develop the meditative understanding. Yeah. Then when you see this very clearly, then you can actually reverse all this to an understanding. Yeah. The mindfulness is very important. Without mindfulness, you cannot see, you cannot understand. That's why mindfulness is paramount, most important. Hmm. Then we move on. Eh? Tracing the origination factors of mental state. How you do it? Okay. So mindfulness of the five mental hindrance is the first set of Dhamma, under Dhamma Nupasana. Yeah? There are five categories of cultivation under the fourth foundation of mindfulness, Dhamma Nupasana. The first category is mindfulness of the five mental hindrance, Pancha Nivaranas. See how they arise, usually through the three major sense door, seeing, hearing, and thinking. Then retrospectively, reverse it via wisdom to understand how the arisen mental hindrance is to be by just being aware. So like just now, the third way, just being aware. The arisen mental hindrance can be sensual desire or ill will, anger, hatred, fear, worry, anxiety, or whatever. Or even restlessness of mind, you just stay with it. Doubt, you just stay with it. Sleepiness, you just stay with it the shape of consciousness will arise. Then you will transform and you will understand all this. Then to counter the mental hindrance, we are cultivating the five spiritual faculty of sadhavirya, sati, samadhi and panya. Once you cultivate it, you will develop the ability to straighten your view and to develop the wisdom. So under this, Mindfulness of the five mental hindrance, the Buddha mentioned very clearly. You will come to know how the unerased mental hindrance come to be. Because before you have, you don't have it. Because when you are aware, you can see how the sensual desire you will. Every moment of sense experience, they arise. They arise. Fear arise. Restlessness of mind arise. Doubt arise. Sloth and torpor when they arise. Silent, aware, be with it. Then you work through your silent mind, awareness nature, observe it and understand it. So, once you see it clearly, then you will come to know through your wrong view, through your habitual tendency, you stir your mind and create the mental hindrance. Because sensual desire, you will, is so habitual. Without the spiritual faculty, sometimes you don't see the importance of meditation, you become sleepy. You got problem, you have restlessness of mind. Then you're not sure, you have doubt. This mental hindrance, they are always there. So when they are there, you can trace the origination factor. Means you will come to know how the unreason mental hindrance come to be. Where you lack the spiritual faculty, you lack wisdom. So when they arise ready, you continue to be aware and stay with it, then it ceases. Then you come to know how the arisen mental hindrance ceases. How the cessation come to be by not doing anything, being aware, finished. Then later on when you trace the origination factor, you will come to know because of your wisdom, your unisopman as in future it cannot arise anymore. That's why all these habitual tendency are rooted out, cannot arise anymore. Then the next one is the mindfulness of the five aggregates of form and mind. See how the five aggregates of form and mind come to be. They are, condi they are conditioned arising, hence impermanent. You attach, cling, and one thing's your way, suffering arise. And because they are impermanent, that's why it is non-self, empty nature. Then see how you deludedly grasp, cling and attach to them via self-delusion or sakayadidi. So this one you can see them very clearly when you are mindful. Uh, 
all the aggregates. Uh, when you attach and cling and grab and give meaning, thinking that feeling is you, perception is you, all the mental concussion activity, the views, opinion, the conditioning, the belief system, the egoic idea and ideology, you think is you, then you suffer. Yeah. Then mindfulness of the six external and six internal sense spaces, where you have understood what these five aggregates of form and mind are, and you have developed the stable sati to be aware of them, then you can trace the origination factor via the mindfulness of the six external and six internal sense spaces to see clearly how the external sense data upon contact with the mind and their respective internal sense bases trigger of sense or consciousness and its related mental activity via Paticca Samupada, the twelve link, when you input the content of consciousness. Then see how, due to wrong view, your mind stir easily. When you contemplate and reflect, you will understand or you will realize that if you do not do anything via Sorry, I read again. Eh? See how, due to wrong view, your mind stir easily. When you contemplate and reflect, you will realize that if you don't do anything via wrong or via right view to see things as they are, it will naturally cease to be. Yeah. So this one is very important. Eh? You will realize that if you don't do anything eh, via right view to see things as they are, it will naturally cease to be. So do it, try it, make it a living reality. Then your wisdom will stabilize. Then the fourth category of mindfulness training is mindfulness of the seven factors of enlightenment. So this one you have to refer to the four foundation of mindfulness or Satipatthana Sutta for further detail. Because the seven factors of enlightenment is to confirm to you that you are on the right path. You have cultivated it correctly. Otherwise they cannot arise. So the seven factors of enlightenment, like I go through earlier on, sati, dhamma, vichaya, virya, pat, uh, piti, then pasati, samadhi, and upeka. They keep on arising. Then you know you're on the right path. Then you are able to be mindful of it. Then when you are mindful of it, you know these are factors of enlightenment. It will make you enlightened. Then you know you are destined for enlightenment. And this is the ninth step of the Avijja Sutta. Yeah. The seven factors of life, they keep on arising. Then finally is mindfulness of the four number two and this three turning. Yeah. So this one we have gone through, huh? the three turning of the four number two. So you develop contemplation, reflection, then you silence your mind, yeah. then you continue to reflect contemplate to stabilize all this understanding. Uh, so all this need mindfulness, the four foundation of mindfulness, the four noble truths, the three things. You need to go through them. Hmm. Then how to reverse it retrospectively? The key here is the silent mind. A silent mind can trace all the origination factor to develop the much needed wisdom, which is Yoniso Moneskara, or wise attention at the moment of sense experience, to retrospectively reverse it via wisdom, or right view, which we have gone through just now. So as per the Satipatthana, you will come to know how the unarisen factors or hindrance comes to be. Then you will come to understand how the arrays and fetters or hindrances to be. So all this, you will witness them. Then the fifth way is through your willpower. Because according to the Buddha, based on the first four he has taught you, you still cannot do it. Then you have to use your own willpower. With teeth clenched and tongue pressed against the palate, one should with one's mind, restrain or root out those unwholesome thoughts. And in doing so, this evil thought or unwholesome thought of greed, hatred and delusion will dissolve. 
and the mind will inwardly become settled, calm, composed, and concentrated. So sure determination via a strong willpower to abandon the unwholesome thought can also be done. Eh? But this one is not the wisdom way. So these are for people who already try everything but they cannot develop it. So they have to use their willpower. Okay, good. So at least we finish. Oh, we still got 22 minutes. Okay, we will now continue with the second session. Eh? Yeah, but you, before I just translate what uh, Alicia uh, uh, mentioned just now huh? for the benefit of some who may not know Mandarin. <laughs> Alicia said tomorrow is the birthday of uh, Di Sang Wang Fu Sa. Uh, so she has helped organize some uh, lighting of the candle. Uh, oil lamp, yeah, the oil lamp, sorry. Uh, to actually uh, celebrate the occasion. Uh, is to rejoice and to help out in whatever way. Uh, so all these are very wholesome. Then she made this wish. He said he would like to thank eh, all those who donated eh, and kilometers who has contributed towards this uh, wholesomeness by invoking pure wish. Hopefully this lighting of the oil lamp can also lead to causes and conditions for it to light up our nature so that you all can also awaken to your nature. Uh, so all this is very wholesome. Eh? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Uh, now we can hear Amitofu, uh, Yeah, Amitofu. Radio, Mrs. Steele, and yeah. uh, Okayamitas. Thank you, uh, the yeah. Sister Alicia, for nominating nominating me. Mm. Mm, uh, thank you for the pure wish that uh, Sister Alicia made for on behalf of all Kayamitas. Uh, we all rejoice. Mm. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May all our nature arise mm. as soon as possible. Mm. Sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu. Um, I'm very, very uh, honored today to be here for the physical class. Uh -huh. yeah. In fact, this is my first yeah. Ever physical class <laughs> in uh, yeah. Malaysia. 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 Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So uh, I uh, would like to thank uh, the host, uh, Sister Pamasuri and Brother Tim, and also for Brother Tim for picking us up. Uh, we got lost uh, in the dark. We took two hours to finally reach here. At 6.20, we left, reached here at 8.20. Mm. Okay. So it's an impossible trip. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> firstly, it was very heavy traffic. And then uh, secondly, because of the darkness, we also got away lost. Uh, and my sister, uh, unfortunately, uh, is an old school. Uh, she used a map. Yeah. <laughs> so I said it's time for her to do the technology way, yeah, using yeah. technology to help, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm also an old school, but I try to learn as much yeah, as yeah, I yeah. Yes. In fact, the way is, is quite easy. You just download the apps, huh? Very easy. It's very helpful. Oh, okay. So I went the wrong way. <laughs> using Kawajipan from summit side. Oh. So after the turning, I'm uh, supposed to turn this way, I'm uh, supposed to go further up. Instead, I, 
I took the wrong turning. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> so you end up somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then we yeah. totally in darkness. Lah. Oh, okay. okay. So, but fortunately, fortunately, we said, uh, let's get help. Yeah, yeah. better. Yeah. You, you have to yeah, call. Yeah. yeah. So it's better yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Be, to be here, you know, than yeah, to yeah, be yeah, looking yeah. around, looking yeah. around. <laughs> Actually, that brings out a very good point. Because like Dhamma cultivation, once you're not sure, you better seek somebody who knows how to take yeah. you out of the problem. Otherwise, I tell you, you continue to get lost. Huh? Yeah. Not only wrong turning, you don't understand. And you're not sure. That's why you keep on getting lost. You may say, Are you, if I have not missed this turning, the word if is very big. Huh? If. Huh? Then, it, it's not if. It's you understand or not. You understand, you won't get lost. You don't understand, all these mistakes become very easy. Uh, so, that's why I say it brings out a very good point. Seek help. <laughs> Don't wait too long to seek help. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, push it out all the way. Uh, yeah. You continue. So, so today is a very good Dharma lesson yeah, yeah. for very us. Good Dharma that, lesson. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, I mean, it brings a point that uh, without an enlightened being that has gone through the training, we will be lost like yeah. what we experienced tonight, you know, total darkness and all. So uh, we called Sister Parmasuri and then Veritu came and helped us. So the brightness you know, came. Then we said, oh! And as, as Brother Tune took us from the petrol station all the way there, I said, huh, if you have to go by yourself, I think, huh, yeah, it will take you also very long. Uh, it will take you very long. long. Also arrive, you know? I even told my daughter, because his house is very unique, there's only one entrance in or not. You cannot find the entrance, you cannot come in. You can use the map, uh, go until very near, then you realize there is a lot of fence. You cannot come through. Yeah, the fence block you out. But this road, uh, these are uh, internal security area. So the first time when I come, I remember that time the technology was not there. So we also use map. And I'm very good at map. Work. I reached the location very near Brother house. No? Eh? I said, no road to go in. No? The fence everywhere. Oh, then later on only I come to know there is only one road, one road. So I follow that map, follow that road, then I came in. Yeah. Because the map can take you there. But this house is very unique. <laughs> it's in a control, they call gated community. And fencing everywhere, then there is a school in France of all. Huh. Yeah, because you have to come from that side. And you must know the school here take a U-turn, then come in through this. <laughs> yeah. So what we need to understand is when you are not sure, you need to seek help, you seek help. Then yeah. people who has been through they can guide you, uh, like just now from Masuri, but you can tell you, where are you now? Uh, once you give them the location, they will know how to bring you here. Is it like Dhamma? Uh, except Dhamma, I never ask you, oh, where are you now? <laughs> no, because Dhamma you cannot, uh, because this one you have to look at your past. And I, I got no psychic, I cannot read, I cannot... From the way you all come, the way you all manifest and actually ask questions or behave, my nature can know. Then from the way you cultivate, from the way you get entangled, as long as you explain to me your actual sincere uh, way or situation, then I will know how to guide you all. Just like everyone is different. I share differently. I teach differently. Uh, and I don't like everyone also uh, follow the same 
one size fit all. Cannot. Because everybody is different. Your approach is different. Your coming path is different. Your conditioning is different. Uh, then you are from different uh, tradition. Some then some is from different background because your culture, your childhood uh, environment, all this affect you. Then past coming uh, affect a lot. Mm. Then you look at causes and conditions, every moment, every instant, things are moving in a state of flux. So we are not static. Then we change, we transform. Even as a kid, as you grow up, your views, your opinion, your ideology all change, keep on changing, keep on evolving. Until you understand the Dhamma, when you understand the Dhamma, then all this ideology, belief system, all no meaning. Really. This is what the mundane people entangle themselves with. Once you have the Dhamma, you realize truth is, the reality is, everything is just the way it is. No more this and that. Yeah. No more right and wrong. The thing is just the way it is. Right and wrong is according to different people's opinion and views. Right according to you. Or right according to them. Because nature's law is the one that rules and manages everything. That's why the five pancha niyama, they control everything. So if you cannot understand them, means you don't have right view, you don't have wisdom, then you cannot progress, you get stuck. Uh, so all this is the reason why it's not easy to get a spiritual teacher. Uh, so normal, mundane one, quite easy. Uh, they, if they stay around there, if they familiar with the area, then you look for people there, they will be able to guide you and tell you, like, go Singapore, look for you. Uh, Watching that, we won't know how to move around. That time I look for my doctor because she stayed there, I think 10 years or what. What is that? Then she and Ben, they will know how to bring us around. And when we met you also, Chia Deo, they also know how to. Because it's your territory. Uh, like you come to PJSS2, I also know how to take you around. Yeah, this is my territory. But mundane and the spiritual, they are different. So mundane, we have to ask you, where are you now? <laughs> uh, uh, you from airport, you arrive there already, uh, then we go and pick you. But spiritual, it's not a physical location, I understand. Not. Yeah? Where are you now in your cultivation? It's not a physical location, I understand. Not. Cannot. So it's a understanding from that nature, that nature must understand. Otherwise, I cannot instruct, I cannot guide. Uh, then something that is beyond me, I will say, I don't know. This is not my field. That's why sometimes people ask me funny thing. I say, this is not my field. Uh, I cannot answer you. Uh, okay? So you can continue. Yeah. Sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Um, but you, to this lesson, I um, uh, like to rejoice yeah. because these are all the important pointers that the uh, radio emphasized yeah. and uh, I make full use of this yeah, yeah, actually yeah. in 2020. Sado, yeah. In 2020, yeah. uh, this is my recollection, you know, uh, uh, like for example, silencing the mind. Yeah, yeah, way, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot say enough that this is so powerful. Yeah, so powerful and so important. So powerful for, so so important. for yeah. me that I can be at peace with myself, yeah, yeah, yeah. not creating a lot of karmic negativity correct, correct. for Sado. myself and for others. Sado, I must Sado. emphasize uh. this yeah. to my sister. Yeah, yeah. that's why you saw, you saw all this. Yes. Because you did the awareness-based yes, meditation. Yes. You been very, very sincere, yes. straightforward. You really follow the words, word by word you do. Yeah. They are, most of them, so conditioned by the old school. But Radio, yes, uh, I must uh, mention this, uh, uh, initially it's not easy to Definitely. Do. It's not easy. Yeah, you cannot see, see the result one. Yes, you cannot see the result ah. initially. So you, you, you have to fight against your mind. You know, yeah. Because you really have to, you know, if you give up, then gone. Yeah, gone. Right. Because that logical mind you tell you 
tell you all the wrong thing one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's the reverse one. Yeah, it's the reverse one. You, you Because the awareness based realization, you must have the awareness nature first one. Then only you can understand one. Uh, it's not a thought based one. Thought based one, you can accumulate a lot of knowledge like you know, but you cannot do one. You cannot experience that one. That's why she able to, like in her own words, uh, overcome all the problems because she can be at peace with herself and others. It's because that awareness allow her to see and she understand. It's not a thought telling him, no, ah, yeah, this is probably the same, ah, they are just the way they are. You apply like that, ah, the Dhamma cannot come out. Cannot. Yeah. That one is the final wisdom born of that silent mind awakening to it. Because when you silent and aware with that emotion that arise, that fear, that anger, then you witness it ceasing, That nature weakness you know, not the thought telling you, you know, is so different. Then that one, you you will understand it very clearly. It's not a being. It's not a thought. It has nothing inside there. But that nature is so beautiful, so wonderful. You can do such great thing. That's like the true awareness based meditation. Very few people can understand. Yeah. But once you develop it, it becomes so beautiful, and you you like experience a completely different world, the world of mindfulness and awareness. Your mind is always like those trained mind in the meditative state throughout the day, you know. like the Buddha said, heedfulness, ever mindful, constantly meditating. Most of the time is tranquil, still inside that. Human being want to have one moment of no thought also so difficult. How can they realize all this? You know, that's an awareness based meditation is not what you think. Unless you do and realize it, stabilize it, you cannot understand why we share what my book write. You may accumulate some knowledge, uh, superficial intellectual knowledge, thinking, you know. But the real one, without awareness, the deep meaning cannot surface, cannot stand out. Uh, just like that, the Alicia also said, if she don't go through that, that meditative transformation and bring her nature in, uh, until the pure awareness deep inside her, she can never understand what no thought is, and it can be thirty to forty-five minutes without thought. No, I ask you to. Try your best to have five seconds without thought. You cannot, you cannot do it unless you hold it in concentration, jhana and all that. Otherwise, if a free mind, you try not to think, not to arise any thought. Impossible. Yeah, your memory is all not trained. Your spiritual faculty is not there. Your stability of mindfulness awareness not there, and you cannot be mindful within the moment. Within the moment means everything you do, the awareness and the kaya and the nature, they move as one specific phenomenon. Everything is just aware, 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 aware. But human beings think a lot. You realize every moment you are thinking, you are worrying, you have a lot of thought activity, sankara, right, nonstop, proliferating. But this type of awareness, when we do it, we hardly think. Then later on, when it stabilizes and you're very stable, like now, throughout the day, my nature is just that nature, shaipo. No Monday mind, nothing. It's just like that. You tell people, people won't believe. How can? Impossible. But yes, when your Monday mind collapse, there is nothing. Just that pure super Monday mind come out, and that one live life. That's why that is heedful living. You are ever mindful, constantly aware, heedful throughout the day, and that is possible. It can be done. That's why unless you go through it, you can never understand all this. So Po Cheng bring out a very good sharing today. You continue Po Cheng. Very good, sir. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Patient. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you you have to constantly 
Mm. Yes. Yes. Their religious routine, all things, and your faith, everything, the spiritual faculty. Uh. Yeah. A period, I remember. Uh, uh. Then suddenly a lot of things happen to you. Uh. Yes, yes. Yeah, cannot move anymore. Uh. Yeah, yeah, not like last time. Already, yeah. uh, they can't jump, they panic. Uh, cannot already, uh, it, it just stay there. <laughs> ah, something happening to you. Uh. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, has happened. Uh, there is a very, they call it the transformation is very, very pronounced, very clear. Clearly, you, you can feel it. Something has already uh, I cannot already. Cannot. Cannot. cannot uh. yeah, that thing cannot move. That thing cannot move. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and a lot of things you cannot do already. You cannot do already. That's why the precept, you cannot break one. Like you see mosquito, no matter how, you cannot, or cannot, you cannot even have the slightest ever, you can at the moment blow it or, or move your hand or, yeah, very gently. Yeah, you cannot harm, cannot do. And this is not something conditional or no. This is true understanding or no. That nature becomes like that. No. That nature just understands no. And you, you become like very different. A lot of things you see, eh? you you like you willingly do one. You you not like last time very self here. Eh, this has nothing to do with me. Why should I bother? Uh, you just walk away. You now know already. You know, sometimes I remember during the transformation at the time. Eh? Anything eh, like dirty or drop or what I see, eh, I will go and clear it. I will clean it. Of course in my house lah. Not in the public, lah. But if the public, if I see dangerous, ah, like broken glass or what, I will clear it. I will clear it. Yeah. Because you cannot like have that type of selfish mind. Ah, ah yeah, other people, ma, watch out. Cannot already. Ah. Your mind becomes so different. No? Then when I knock something, I told you, ah, I cannot like, wow, painful. Cannot. I laugh. Ah. I laugh. Then I know that that. Tactile sensation are very painful, very severe in normal people. But I can just be with it and just accept that reality, even though it's like that. Then I just smile, I laugh over it. Oh, then, like my wife make the coffee, forgot to put sugar. And not only don't react, I just say, I am aware. And then I go and tell my wife, I say, you can have a sip. Then he realized he put sugar. Uh, it's very different. You no longer the way you are. And this thing become very clear now. That's why the Dhamma is Pachetang, the Buddha say, can be realized by the wise, each for themselves. But they themselves inside, they know it. This is what the Dhamma is. And the Dhamma is very clear to them. One. No need to ask people, one. no need to get people to confirm all those things. Because this is the truth that you realize and can only be awakened to by the wise. Pachetang, Veditabo, Venohiti. That is the type of Dhamma. Not the one that you need certification, you need confirmation, you need to check. Hey, you do, or you go like that. Huh? No need. Huh? The one that went through the transformation, you understand. That's why when they describe, using their own word, my nature, no one, they have control. Otherwise, they cannot speak in that way. Huh? Yeah. Otherwise, they will follow the text. Yeah. They will follow the text. They will look for uh, like standard uh, answer to all this type of thing. Yeah. No need one. You use your own word. The people who have gone through have realized they will know what that thing is. Mm. So this is like Pusheng said, out of love, compassion, kindness, he wants to give faith to Kanyamita. Which is very good. I like this type of sharing. But they themselves follow the instructions straight forward and realize it and understand what this thing is. And what she says is very true. Initially, you know something has happened, transformed, but you cannot put it into words. We are not stable yet. You cannot explain to people what this is. 
until she report to me, then I explain. Then she will have a lot of joy and she understand what this thing is. Uh, then the understanding become clear. Then when she read my Han Sutta Bunga, it's like, oh, everything so clear. Oh, everything is so beautiful. Whereas a lot of other Kayamita, like even Brother Song, uh, he read five, six times, uh, only he get the answer. Uh, no? oh, the first few times, they are book you. Uh, you ask Brother Song, the appendix, the, there is one appendix inside there, the Krishnamurti quote all there. She read, don't know how many times. Not easy. Huh? Not easy. This is very good. Hmm. Sadhu. Huh? Rejoice. Huh? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, we better end. Yeah? 10.35 already. Yeah? So we have to prepare for another day rest. Packing everything. Then Saturday we will uh, go for the silent temple stay. Yeah? And hopefully everybody again like uh, today. I think the test result come out all negative, huh? so sad. Mm. So let us now share merits, transfer merits, and you will do the closing puja. Akasata Chavumata Devanaka Mahindika Punyang Tang Anamoditwa Chirang Rakan Tuloka Sasana Eta wata jamehi sampadan punya sampadan sape dewa anumodan tu sabesampati sidia idang menya tinang ho tu subita hontunya teyo idang menya tinang ho tu subita hontunya teyo Idang menya tinang ho tu sukita hon tu nya teo. Yevo asato kalena sasa sampati he tu cha. Vito bawa tu loko cha. Raja bawa tu damiko. Ipina punyang kamena mame bala sama kamo. Satang sama kamo hotu yawa nivana patia sadu sadu sadu. Okay, you can now pay respect mindfully to Lord Buddha, Kwanin Bodhisattva, and all the worthy ones. Eh? Then we will end the whole session. Sadu sadu sadu. Dear brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, now shall we put fold our palms and say sadhu three times to Bratio and Mrs. Steel for coming all the way to share this beautiful Dhamma with us. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu to Sister PG for fetching Bratio and Mrs. Steel. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu to Sister Sui for helping in the recording and the Zoom session. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And I welcome to Sister Po Cheng and Sister Han. <laughs> uh, sorry for uh, not be able to bring you in as uh, soon as possible. And because I didn't know that uh, Han doesn't know how to use ways. The Tuesday night, I I keep telling her, use ways, use ways. <laughs> sadhu, sadhu, sadhu to Po Cheng and Sister Han. Uh, actually, this place is very conducive for meditation and we feel very safe. Mm. We feel very safe because we are all the guards and then the surrounding is very quiet. Mm. Uh, difficult, to, a, a little bit difficult to find in the beginning, but after when you're used to it, it's very easy. Eh? Mm. Thank you.